Welcome back to another video. All right, so My Hero Academia Season 7, no, just the show in general, is a top five anime of all time. I'm serious, okay? I don't even, I'm not even kidding. And I don't care what your opinion is. But uh, at the same time, I've only ever watched seven other shows. So it is in my top seven. But um, yeah, I think it is truly a really good anime. And if it wasn't for the fan base, it would have a lot more respect. So uh, the fan base is the one that's really selling for, for, for the show. But um, let's talk about Season 7. Uh, it's was very highly anticipated in my list for shows that I wanted to watch in 2024. And because uh, I recently caught up from like season four to season six of My Hero Academia uh, in like late 2023. So I was really like excited for season seven. Uh, I think this might be the last season or one more season or like a few more episodes after that. I haven't read the manga, so I don't really know for sure. But um, so far, I really enjoyed the, the premiere and then the second episode as well. I think it's like a nice start to the series. And I also really loved how like they just jumped straight into the action. We didn't have to wait like 15 episodes out of like 22 or like 30 to see the main villain show up. And you know, everything before that is just like, I don't know, building up to it or something like that. It just jumps straight into the action, which I really appreciate because that's what I want to see after season six, after the way that season six ended, I would expect something to like happen really quickly. Um, so that was really nice to see. And then so far, like the animation, the voice acting, everything else doesn't seem odd to me. So I think it's good on that end. Uh, and then, so this new character shows up, Star and Stripe, uh, the number one American hero inspired by All Might. So it was nice to see her, um, like the new character. And her quirk is really weird, but interesting. So I definitely am going to read up on it like online or just, I hope they kind of explain it more in the show. Maybe, I don't know. But um yeah, so she shows up to fight Shigaraki, like, very early on in the first episode of Season 7. And uh, this is happening as Endeavor, uh, Best Genist, and Hawks are, like, on their way to meet up with Star and Stripe. But then Tomura Shigaraki appears halfway there, and then she, he starts fighting her. And and as far as the fight goes, like, they have a brief fight. And I think, like I said, everything seemed pretty fine to me. Like, the animation, the fighter jets, and then the, the coordination from the whole team... I really love seeing that like, aspect of another country in the show. And I think they wrote it kind of well, in my opinion. So yeah, her quirk is New Order, which, and that allows her to like set rules, two rules at a time to like whatever or whoever she touches. And then she calls out the name and then she states the rule on that thing. And so after like the brief battle between uh, Shigaraki and then Star and Stripe, she catches him off guard and then she calls out his name and then says that like, if, he, if you move, your heart is going to stop. But then that doesn't really work because Tomura is having like an identity crisis. So that that's like a that's a convenient, but I'll allow it. That's a convenient weakness and, and unique weakness that I didn't really see happening because her quirk is just overpowered um, by textbook definition. But there are other ways to like get around it, you know. And one question that I had is that like what like it's it's still so unclear to me like the the extent of the quirk or just how it really works because for example, if you take Barry Allen from DC and you catch him off guard and then you say Barry Allen and then you state your rule. But can you say the Flash? Can you say Barry Allen? Can you say, or do you have to say the, the Flash, Barry Allen, Bartholomew, Henry, Henry Allen? Or um, what if he goes by like an, another alias? Do you state that name? So still a little bit shaky. Maybe I'm like thinking too much into it though. But yeah, that's basically like the, the summary of the main episode. All for one is like in hiding with Spinner, the, the tortoise or the... The, the ninja turtle and then he's just like saying like yo you gotta all the heroes are kind of distracted and all the world like has their own thing going on because of the recently released villains from the like fortress where they held the villains now they escaped so the world has a lot of underhands seen as like destruction that like shigaraki caused and then all the other villains that escaped so all for one is like spinner like this is on you we gotta like get an, a new lead together i'm pretty sure and then to also just cause further division amongst the heroes because they don't have that much time or resources to help the whole world. So they're going to be divided, basically. Now, moving on to episode two. Uh, no, wait. Episode one ends with, like, so Star pins Shigaraki down. And then she got sent missiles from, like, a U.S. base that she's going to use to, like, hit Shigaraki. And then that should kill him. But it doesn't kill him, as you can see. Uh, so in episode two, he survives. This is when I was like, okay, it's, it's getting a little bit lucky. Basically, like he he replaced himself with a Nomu that was there, and he still had his regeneration, so nothing really hurt him 
permanently enough to kill him. But uh, I thought that was a little bit like lucky. But um, but he escapes death from the missile, and then he flies to Star and Stripe. And I don't think she can fly. She was relying on like stepping on the fighter jets that her own crew was flying around her. So, and then uh, Shikaraki now wants to steal his, her quirk, so he does, and then she doesn't really fight it. And then she places a rule on herself so that she can't de decay, so she can't die. But I'm guessing that as Shikaraki was stealing her quirk, the rule that she placed on herself also leaves, if the quirk with you leaves as well. So she set like one last rule on the quirk that once it's absorbed, it can oppose other quirks. So Shikaraki absorbs her quirk. She basically dies, like on the outside world. But the quirk itself that he absorbed is now within Shikaraki, and that can oppose the other quirks that Shigaraki had. Sounds confusing by words, I'm sure. But um, but this part was really cool. Though. I really liked. Basically, there's this like uh, entity of like New World Order. No, <laughs> the New Order inside of Shigaraki, and then it was fighting the other quirks that lay inside of Shigaraki and then ripping them to shreds. So Shigaraki is just losing quirks as the battle goes on, which significantly nerfs him, I'm sure. So that was really cool to see because uh, he was a little bit OP there. So um, I think the students have a better chance of beating him or raising like a, a challenge against the League of Villains. So yeah, like I said, the vestige of new uh, of the New Order quirk inside of Shigaraki starts to like beat up the other quirks and then kill the other quirks. So Shigaraki is losing quirks in real time. And then he tries to fly away because the other fighter jet pilots are still attacking him. So he tries to fly away and then his plan is to give the quirk to someone else so that he can't keep on losing quirks and he can't like die. So he flies to like some random person's house, uh, decays the house and then gives the quirk to someone else. And then that's basically how the episode ends. And then meanwhile, after the other fighter jets touch down with like Endeavor, Best Genus and Hawks, uh, all we learned that like all might learns that the other quirks were destroyed in the process. So that basically gives the UA students an extension on like how long they thought Shigaraki would be ready for his like total quirk completion because now he lost quirks and now he's actually at his weakest. So the UA students can attack him while they're at the weakest. So they have a better chance of beating him and then succeeding. So um, I'm really excited to see how the next episode plays out. It does have to wait like for a week every time, every time for like each episode, because like with the amount of flashbacks that they do, and then some other, you know, like the the transitions as well, it's like it's a lot less than like twenty minutes, so it really flies by like really quickly. So uh, I do wish like they dropped like the first two episodes on the first, the very first day it premiered, and then the third episode last week, yeah, like just like three days ago. But um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, leave a comment down below what you thought about the season. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how it ends. But yeah, that's about it. Peace.